future SEOs. Uh, he's an adjunct professor at the Gimli School of Business, specializing in blockchain technology. He's also senior advisor at Harbor Peak LLC. Thank you. Thank you. I spent the last hour, luckily, but I didn't follow the comedian. I spent the last 10 minutes wishing I had. Um, my favorite part about intellectual debates are the following. If you don't believe us, go fuck yourself. It's like, because that's how we work in academia. I get up in front of my student, and I say, look, this is the way I see the world. If you don't agree with me, go fuck yourself. Because minds are great, as opposed to perhaps we could have a civilized discussion about all of these things. Uh, my background is I was a tech investor for a long time. I wrote a book last year uh, uh, about investing and spent a lot of time, more time on it than I should have. And they woke up and a good friend of mine called me up in September of last year and he said, what do you know about crypto? And I said, not enough to fill a thimble. Why? He said, well, it's kind of interesting. It's the interconnection of economics and technology, two things you spent the last 30 years thinking about. You might spend some time there. I said, well, actually, I'm going to spend a month sleeping and then maybe I'll go and look at it. Sure enough, I started reading about it. I was quite fascinated by it because of the debate that was going on. And I convinced Fordham, which was doing some, this is our school, uh, business school used to be in this building, we're now across the campus. Um, I convinced them that they should have a class in crypto, so they started a uh, class last J January in crypto. The first half of the class was on cryptocurrencies, the second half of the class was on blockchain, specifically the technology. Last week we finished up our second term teaching the class, and so I spent the last year thinking about these problems from somebody who's been watching technology for a long time. And I've concluded a couple of things that I think are interesting, which I'd love to share with you. Uh, being a professor, I too prefer Q&A, but we'll throw out a few things and we'll open up the Q&A. Um, number one, the first thing you have to do is you have to separate the coins into buckets because they're not all the same and they don't have the same functionality, they don't have the same use case, they don't have the same, really the same structure to them. First one is Bitcoin, carve that out. That's a unique thing all of themselves. Next, what you want to do is what I call really the platform currencies, which is the Ethereums and the EOSs and those, you can carve those out. Then you have the money-like ones, which is Monera and all those, you can carve those out. Then you end up with these things called utility tokens, which is something I spent a lot of time thinking about. They're all very different. Um, utility tokens that we've seen so far, SPOs, is a colossal disaster, as I have been saying for nine months, that is now unfolding in a way that they're all gonna go to zero, except a couple that won't. Picking which ones won't is going to be probably impossible. Um, so I think SDOs, as we've seen them historically, was a giant uh, uh, mania that entrepreneurs took advantage of and left a lot of people upset that they ever heard about the SDO. Uh, originally called the Mycelin Supply. Um, so there's the hat. Then you have the money ones, which I think are kind of interesting because you have to understand what function they're going to play. So we've got to talk about that. Then you have the platforms. The problem with the platforms is the platform has to boot and the currency has to get adopted. So we have two things working against us for that to work. So that's interesting. And then you have Bitcoin. So as I struggle with all this, I keep asking the same question, for what purpose are we doing all of this? Now, mind you, I think blockchain is really cool. I think there's going to be some stuff that comes along with it. I don't think we've seen the stuff that's going to be cool about it. I lean towards centralized blockchains a little bit, uh, which I know is against the theme today. But we can talk a little bit about that if you want. Bitcoin is the one that's most fascinating. And I'll give two very quick stories. Anybody who knows who John Basquiat is? He was originally a street artist here in New York, and then he started putting stuff on canvases. He died at a very young age, and he painted things that I think are among the most fascinating art, modern art, contemporary art. Some people think they're ugly. Uh, Basquiat sold two years ago, almost two years ago, 18 months ago, at Christie's for $110 million. It's skull, it has a blue background, it has skull, a bunch of graffiti on it. It was only the sixth painting in the history of the world to sell at auction for more than $100 million. And if you look at it, I look at it, I've been a huge Basquiat fan for 25 years. I think it's worth it's great. I see that, I think, every, I, it's not as good as a Picasso, but I put it in the camp of the greats. Other people look at it and they think that is incredibly ugly. All we needed was one person with a lot of money who thought it was fantastic and wanted to own it to bid $110 million. And so I traded at $110 million. Interesting in my mind. So it says to us that we have these cultural artifacts that are really important and people really value. And you can't say that Basquiat is crap or shit if you 
You may not want to own it, but somebody wants to own it and they put a price to it. So we as a culture get these items that we think are valuable. That's Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital cultural artifact that for some people represents decentralization, some people represents libertarian views, some people view it pick up a piece of the future, some people it's just a digital asset. That is a cultural artifact, and that cultural artifact will have value over time, and since it's scarce, as long as people want to believe there's a mythology around it, that will have value. Predicting that value, I think, will be incredibly hard to do. Odds are high that it will continue to have a life of its own. But its only function will be cultural artifact. Vasquez's only function is to be a piece of art. Bitcoin will not emerge as a currency. It's not going to replace gold, although that's, I always think, such a fascinating notion. But it will be a cultural artifact that people want to own. Wouldn't you like to own the first Bitcoin? Sure. Wouldn't you like to have the Bitcoin that was mined on your birthday? Sure. Wouldn't you like to have the Bitcoin that's the number of the Bitcoins your favorite number? Sure. We, weird. We're human. We culturally attach things to these sorts of things. So when you think about Bitcoin, you want to think of it as a digital artifact in the digital world. You saw me you say, well, that's not that big. Anybody play Fortnite? Right? Fortnite's free to play, right? In the last 12 months, they've sold $2 billion, $2 billion fiat dollars worth of in-game purchases. Last year, they sold a gun, a single gun, which they claim is only one of them, a pretty cool gun for $10,000 fiat. Somebody took fiat and paid $10,000 for it. So this digital world's incredibly important. It's where we're headed. It's going to be part of all of our lives. And if you're in the digital world, you want digital assets. You're going to want digital real estate. You're going to want digital artifacts. You want digital art. You're going to have a digital apartment. You're going to have all these things in the digital world. Those things will have value. And they will have value. And we will trade fiat for them. Why not? They deliver joy to people. They deliver value to people. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, when you go to the money light ones, I think that they're all somewhat doomed because of the adoption. Why are you going to use Litecoin or Cash or Monero? Use Monero because it's secret. You know what that use case is. Why is the average person going to use it? They're not. So it's like, who's your incremental buyer for all these things? I think that's sort of the challenge. I worry about the money things. I think you have to understand the history of currency to really understand that. You then get into the platforms. The platform has to boot. So if you go look at Ethereum, those boys are smart. They got a lot of money. They're building some really cool technology. I think there's 50 transactions a day. Right? Supporting a pretty expensive platform value for that. So I worry about that one. Um, and then the uh, utility tokens that were used to raise money, I think ultimately they collapse for lots and lots of reasons. So what's the future? I do think there's a future. I think there's a future for tokens. I think social tokens are much more important than people realize. I think tokens that are given away as reward are much more important than people realize. I think that there will be a digital currency because we live in a digital world, there will be a digital currency. I don't think we've seen that digital currency yet. Uh, we've seen pictures of what it might look like, but we haven't seen that one digital yet. So I think winter's going to be long, and I think out of that's going to be some interesting things. Predicting what those things will be specifically, I think, is almost impossible. So that's my speech. Lovely part about it, at the end of the day, only had 20 to start with, we're down to 12. If I keep talking, I think I can get us to single digits. And if you give me enough time, I'll get the whole room out of here. Go ahead. Oh, that's right. right? Look, this is my home. This is my home. I don't mind coming up and speaking. Yeah. I think you have to speak up a little bit more. Nineteen. If I had to bet, it will be lower in a year than it is today. If I was forced to bet, I think Bitcoin's the hardest one to pull. I think you have your problem with it is you have in, who's the incremental buyer? Who's, who's going to buy Bitcoin? It keeps going down every day, going up today. Who's going to who's going to be that incremental buyer? I think that's the challenge. It's been the challenge all year. So I think Ethereum's problem is they raised a bunch of ICO money that's sitting in Ethereum that they have to convert to fiat to pay bills. So there's a natural source of supply on selling Ethereum. Unless you have an incremental buyer, I think your that one's going down too. So I think we're in nuclear winter for a while. I think technology is really interesting. I think digital currency, if you will, is really interesting. Therefore, it's more 
Right, I think so. We had that moment in the cryptos last fall, and we popped that bubble, and we're now headed the other way. I mean, somebody thought if I wanted to get into crypto, each day it goes lower, there's no rush. So, who's your from Alabama? So, how do you do it? It's an adoption problem. I think if you get an adoption problem, that's where you get into an interesting debate. And you ask yourself, what problem is this trying to solve? And that's, I, I've been in these debates, I, I, I apparently am really good at pissing people off. People come and talk about Bitcoin and I ask a question, I always say, for what purpose? And then it was a currency for a while and that really wasn't going to happen. Now it's a store of value. And then you say, what's a store of value? They can't define the term. And so it's like whack-a-mole, the intellectual whack-a-mole. This is what we're going to use it for. And you ask them a question, that goes away and it's going to be something else. I think it's a digital artifact. It's cool. Wouldn't you want to own Bitcoin? Sure. Sure. I don't think there's any other purpose yet. Yeah, sure. ICOs were these initial coin offerings, and the idea was it's, it, the thesis was pretty simple. Crypto is the future. Here's your opportunity to buy them. They were going up. You suck people in because people like the prices that are going up. No one ever stopped and said, what do I own? What happens at the end? As we started to play through that model, we realized that the utility token part of it was a complete charade. So I'm not getting anything. And people, I sat in these conferences, people would put up a chart of AOL, where they put up a chart of Amazon or Google and say, this is your opportunity in crypto. They, in those cases, we bought equity, which was a claim on the business. Here you're buying a utility token that's a claim on a ham sandwich or a movie or something, right? It's a utility at the end. So there's a huge fallacy in all that. Once we burst the bubble, people are like, oh my god, and that's come back. SEO is the idea that's registered this thing that no one should buy so that the regulators don't want this. And I think they're missing the point. I think that you have no buyers because people are starting to wake up to wait a minute, this is a ridiculous thing to buy, not because the regulators shut it down. The regulators threaten to shut it down. And everyone says, oh, if we register it and we do all this stuff, then of course we'll be fine. Regulators aren't the big bad way. I, I thought we would have 30 enforcement actions by this time this year. That was my prediction in the spring. We have a handful. And the cases aren't going very long. So it, the regulators aren't the ones that close down the market. I think the buyers are on strike. So they're like, wait a minute. So the SDO, in my mind, the fallacy of this whole thing, we're going to register. I think a security token is a tokenized security. A bond, a stock, private placement, venture capital, private equity, real estate. Those are security tokens in my mind. They're securities that are tokenized. And there's a really interesting use case for why it securitizes those sorts of things, but it has nothing to do with them trading. It has everything to do with optionality and fractional ownership. Yeah. Can you compare the SDO and I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so an IPO was an initial public offering. It was always equity. You owned a piece of the business. If the business became very valuable, that piece, in theory, would become very valuable, assuming that there was some limit to the supply. ICO was this idea of initial coin offering. So you got a coin, and you traded something of value for a coin. The question is, what did that coin get you? In an IPO, that coin, that token, which we call stock, gave you ownership right of the underlying Equity, and we had 85 years of securities law to protect you. In the ICO, I gave you something of value, and you gave me a token. That token has some rights to it. Generally, those were poorly defined. The way I like to think about it, it's a movie ticket at a theater that hasn't been built, in a town that hasn't been built, for a movie that hasn't been written. Right? So it's like, yeah, it may be, right? I always think of Hamilton, right? Maybe it is Hamilton. And we're really glad I bought that ticket early. Or maybe it's... So you know, in SDO, you do not own part of the... No, SDO is just a, a registered token offering. And you still, at the end of the day, own a movie ticket in a theater that hasn't been built in a town that hasn't been built in a movie that hasn't been written. How does the tax work? Say, I think some tax, that's what I was interested in. The lawyer who didn't do this. The tax is not in your favor. Every time you trade one of these, that's a taxable event. If there's a gain, you have to pay taxes. If they find out you didn't pay taxes, you will get a letter from the U.S. government. U.S. Treasury, let's say, pay your taxes. You don't pay your taxes, you will go to court. You don't pay there, you go to jail. And this is serious stuff. Al Capone went to jail for tax evasion. So, yeah, yeah no, they, um, I'd be very careful. I keep track of that, and I report for them. Those are taxable events. And his notion that, oh, it's sitting at an exchange, the IRS doesn't see it that way. The IRS will say, I own stocks at a brokerage account, at Schwab. 
That doesn't slow them down in making me pay the taxes. Hey, you'll get into a valuation interesting thing, but <laughs> you, the burn's on you, not on the IRS. Yeah, how about this? You walk in and buy a pizza with Bitcoin? That is a capital gain transaction. That is not a currency. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, our next speaker is.